Years ago, there was an awful lot of public attention being given to the, the AIDS epidemic. There were no tests, no treatments, no nothing, only a big and, and widening problem, and it was widening in a lot of places, particularly Africa. It was far bigger than a test or a drug. The road infrastructure wasn't as, as you see now, and even then, the only thing that was tested there was malaria. We did not have equipment to test everything as we have now. At that time, we did not know much about HIV. The HIV epidemic in Tanzania and in most of Africa was devastating. And there were two issues. There was no treatment and people were being tested late. There weren't laboratory systems to help them get testing. At the time, there was very little about what the treatment would look like. It was a lot about prevention. And so our first involvement was frankly creating the first HIV test for blood screening. You had to be able to diagnose. A patient had to be able to get to a doctor, a physician, a clinic. In most cases, especially in rural areas, dispensaries were 10, even 15 kilometers away from the villages. And for a pregnant woman walking to go to a clinic for 10 kilometers, it was really difficult especially when she was in labor. We had unique capability in testing, in laboratories, in pharmaceuticals, in the infrastructure that led us down a path with Tanzania to fix a lot more than the access to drugs. Abbott is a global healthcare company and it was the first company to develop the, the test, a rapid test for HIV. And so in 2000, when they started international programs and brought the rapid test to Tanzania and other countries, it allowed the countries to now test, counsel, and get people on treatment. People felt more hopeful, because before you were afraid to go, you didn't know when you would get your results, and once you had your results, you didn't know what the treatment would be. And bringing this kind of quick succession of, of reaching people in one visit was, was really helpful. People were used to be tested, which results could take a month or two months to get their results. But this new rapid test was just 15 minutes you get your results. I got tested, and it was the first time I was being introduced into Tanzania. I was negative of HIV. It was very good news for me, knowing that I'm negative. A lot of people, NGOs, or different organizations were implementing their whatever they was want to do. But Abbott came with a different angle, which uh, was very positive. One of the great things about uh, the work that Abbott does is that we have values that are related to creating enduring and achieving interventions that that will last and have a real impact on the lives of people. Early on, Abbott and Abbott Fund established relationships with the government of Tanzania, including the then Minister of Health, Mama Anna Abdullah. Anna Abdullah was an absolute rock star to the people in that country. You know, she was showing me what, uh, what life was like for the people, either, either with or without the disease in uh, rural areas. And she would tell me, you know, here's what you need to be thinking about. Here's what needs to happen. Here's the kinds of things that need to, to be done. Abbott is an organization which I think is unique. You talk to them, tell them your problem, what do you want. And if it is within their reach, you get a distance that it has no strings. They make sure that the program is sustainable and that Tanzanians are there to take on. The trust that has been built between Abbott and the Ministry of Health and the Tanzania government is so solid. Initially, the government thought that we might be here for the short term to drop off some products, to make a donation, and that we would, we would leave. 
Very quickly, they learned that that's not what we were about. We were about uh, creating lasting change uh, that would help the country come up out of the HIV epidemic. The Abbott Fund is the foundation of Abbott, which prior to 2000 worked primarily in the United States. In 2000, they started to do international programs around the response to the HIV epidemic. Abbott Fund Tanzania is working closely with the National Hospital, Mumbili National Hospital, where we work with the Emergency Department, the Central Pathology Lab. What we originally started out targeting as orphans and vulnerable children became far broader, and the commitment just stayed that way over time. And I think if you went to Mumbili Hospital today, you'd see a very different place. If you could have seen it when I saw it, there were no windows, there were just holes, and colorful cloths on the floor, and each colorful cloth was where that patient laid on a hard concrete floor. Most of their care came from family that was with them, taking care of them, because there wasn't enough staffing in the hospital, you know, and there wasn't much else that could be done. Mumbil National Hospital is the largest national referral hospital in the country, which is under the Ministry of Health, and this is the public hospital. Because patients were not getting proper emergency care, the Minister of Health and Mumbil National Hospital, support of Abbott Fund, they decided to open an emergency department. Before, there was no emergency department in the country. After open department, the overall mortality of the hospital reduced by more than 40%. You went from people who had never seen an emergency department and you had to teach them without giving them an example. There was no example nearby, so you had to teach people. With that knowledge, they developed their own process for doing these things, but still following kind of the emergency process of triage and treatment, um, but working within a lot of, of challenges. Currently, we're working on sustainability, and we've built into the programs how are they going to sustain themselves, both economically, professionally, and also ensuring that there's ownership. And so now the owners are within the community or within the program, and they know how they're going to pay the bills coming forward. They know how other people will learn about the skills that they have and how they'll be able to teach them. Within five years, the emergency department has become self-sustainable. The money that they earned for the hospital allows them to pay all of the bills in the emergency department. I was out in some of the other surrounding uh, cities in Tanzania where they had smaller regional labs. They could have the capability to do monitoring and testing. So we decided to redo those labs, all 23 of them in the regions, and we used our own volunteers from Abbott and our own corporate engineering people and our own diagnostics employees to rejuvenate those labs around the entire country. Abbott helped us to train manpower and all of the laboratories now are manned by Tanzanians. Abbott also helped us put up in place systems how to run a hospital. That was one of my problems. But even then, the income now is significant. Most hospitals now, they can afford to buy some of the items that are needed in the hospitals. There is no patient to leave the hospital without a result in the same day. Having standard emergency department, which is here, having big central laboratory, which is here, having a very good outpatient clinic here, the services you are being provided in Mumbil National Hospital are best in the country. All people now, they are talking about Mumbil National Hospital being the best hospital in the country. economic development projects within communities is called Building Livelihoods. And these projects have grown out of the original commitment to helping communities respond to HIV AIDS epidemic. One example, one of the projects that we do, uh, families who take care of vulnerable children, orphans or children with disabilities, are identified by the communities that we work in and are given something to improve their livelihoods. One of the ones that's been very successful is a cow project. So it's, we call it our dairy and nutrition project and the families receive a cow. Then as that cow grows older, they use the milk to sell it. They use the milk for nutrition for their families. But then when the, the cow has its first female, that offspring is given to another family. 
wakati nipo mdogo kukua hakuna shule mpaka nimekuwa mkubwa mpaka nimezaa mwanangu wa kwanza 2005 ndo kukaanza ujenzi wa shule wa ufadhili wa Abbot Fund sasa najua wanangu hao wanaozaa hawataenda mbali kama mimi hapo mwanzo walikuwa wanategemea kilimo tu cha mahindi ambacho ni cha msimu hadi msimu lakini baada ya kuingia huu mradi wa Abbot Fund wa ngombe watu tumefaidika sana kupitia hawa ngombe wana tusa tukajiingia hii nyumba ambayo mnaiona hapa sasa hivi kwa kupitia kuuza maziwa 2010 mimi nimeshamzaa mimi nimeanza 2015 eh kwa hiyo nilipoa kwa kulenga watoto maana nilikuwa hata nishakuwa na mlemavu nilikuwa nalea na yatima kwa hiyo napata hela ya kuishi watoto uniform madaftari kalamu kwa hiyo nilishukuru sana baada ya kusikia kuna jengwa shule hapa na ufadhili wa Abbot Fund Mategemeo yangu mimi ninachotaka mwanangu asome mwanangu yupo vizuri darasani matumaini yangu najua kabisa Mungu akisaidia atafaulu The paralegal program is part of the building livelihoods program Vulnerable families who are affected by HIV often the children didn't have birth certificates or the families didn't have wills in place to protect the children or the the wives or the husbands left behind and so paralegal groups were able to advise in the communities on how to get birth certificates develop wills local people village people were trained to know the problems in families and help them the paralegals would represent especially the women to primary courts so this program was very useful for women So we took the paralegal program and we added an economic piece to it where within those groups they identified an activity that they thought could could raise funds for them. So they're now receiving additional training on how to do record keeping, business development, forming co-ops and how to make their groups official and how to manage the income that they're receiving to both continue the paralegal service but also provide them with some income so that they can continue to commit their time. The Bantu village when we came here at first it was, people were very poor. The life standard was very low because they had no income, they had no activities. But after about intervention, getting health, they have a nice school. Uh, there there've been so much changes on this village. With these things, the life itself become healthier. Where I see this going for the future is that the country will take these models and will grow on them and will really create really efficient high quality areas of, of medical care laboratory emergency care but also having communities that are self sustainable and are confident after 20 years of partnership of Abbott Fund and the people of Tanzania Abbott Fund is looking forward to many more companies are motivated to do good things but they don't always think about them as long-term sustainable commitments. I'd say don't do it for the headline, don't do it, you know, just for the the visible pat on the back or or whatever it is. You got to really think through am I prepared to sustain this for the long term and what that means. We've been there 20 years now. We have never wavered, never left, and we made a full sustainable long-term commitment to Tanzania and I think it made a difference. I I like what we've been able to accomplish over 20 years and hopefully we can just keep living to that value.